Hey y'all, I'm uh, Scotty Davis from Low Country Fly Shop in Charleston, and today I'm going to tie a drum beater, which is my favorite grass fly for high tides for redfish. Um, starting out, this is a saltwater hook, size 2 is what I use. I like the Daiichis, 2546. Um, Gamakatsus work as well. Um, in the high tide grass flats, generally the only two things you need are or a heavy weed guard and heavy enough eyes to get through the grass. So these are, I think, mediums. A lot of times I'll use small, small eyes and mediums on the other just to get it down um, to them. Rabbit strips are going to make up the tail, zonker strips. Uh, use the magnums if you can find the Texas cuts. Those are really good too, a little bit wider. So I will match it to the body. I'm going to tie an olive one big thing I found too over the years of tying these is if you cut a little a little V shape out I don't know if you can see that that'll help the tie in where you're tying the thread and it's obviously not going to go all the way down to that but in here and also that first wrap of thread when you're tying in your body materials it's going to follow this line as opposed to having to cover up all that leather but, so work the thread back Rabbit, the perfect material. Marabou works good as well. Anything that breathes naturally in the water without you stripping it. Most prey items in a grass flat in the salt water, they're not really going to try to outrun a, red, a redfish. They're going to sit there and do their best to use their camouflage and, and hide. Whereas a rabbit and marabou strips, just they just go crazy. They can't stand it. And the flash is kind of your own preference. I do a little blend of a copper, a root beer, and gold, and then put a little crystal flash in too, just to kind of highlight it. I found this stuff new this year. It's a grizzly accent flash, I think it's called, copper and blue. So you tie that in right on top of the the leather. Now the way you're looking at this fly is going to be inverted, obviously the way the the lead is. So the fish are going to see the rabbit strip first and then as that breathes and pulsates they'll get a little shot of that flash there. And you can always tie in more flash for muddier days and then just cut it off or bite it off if, if it's clear water and the fish are kind of spooky. Sculpin wool, lots of companies make this. It comes in a big hanked package like this. You just basically just start pulling it the size you want to you wanna make. These, these flies too, these toads and quans, uh, Gary Merriman, I think the first guy that, that did the, the toads, but it's, it's a spin off of his design, whereas he used poly, poly yarn, which floats and keeps the flies high in the water column. The sculpin wool or the ram's wool is going to absorb water and actually help pull it a little bit deeper too. And this will be tied in just a couple wraps. Work it around. That's all. This is where that v, cutting that V came in handy. Let's just see that. A little damn material is pretty pretty bulky. As you can see how it flares back there, but as you stack it all together. It, it really blends really really nice where you can see the separation in most yarns this stuff really really grabs it so I'll put one in and with my fingers kind of pull it back towards the the last one when you're doing the same colors this separation here that's generally a hard wrap to to get in there but just come in tight These techniques really work for any kind of crabs you want to tie, merkins or anything like that. So I'm just going to continue building this body really quick. Towards the, the head of it, I like to put a really bright contrasting color because this fly 
pretty much is this light olive sculpin wool really is dead on the color of of uh, Spartina grass, which we're covered with in Charleston. So I'll put a generally a hot pink if I'm using olive. If I'm doing a white body, I like purple, uh, brown or tan bodies, a little orange face really gets their attention. Now that's going to be not very visible, but it does give a little bit of color contrast. And again, you can see here a little bit easier that separation. Just hold it, go over and then use this finger and hold it back. It's going to help on that first and second wrap right there and right there. And that's almost enough. Slide it in there. One loose one. And really, two hard ones is all it takes to hold this stuff in there. I'm using the Danville flat wax nylon 210, but really, any strong thread works. So, that's it. I'll show you the weed guard I like to use too, since it only takes a second. I'll use you're generally 40 pound fluorocarbon just because it's a little bit stiffer and everybody ties their weed guards a little bit different I prefer one I believe is called the Allen loop just tie it in one side now again all this is going to be trimmed it looks like a cotton ball when you're tying it but I'm just forming a loop I'm just going to measure it up to the hook point tie it off Pull that forward. Put a little dam behind it too. Clear cure is perfect for this. You can pull it forward and put just a little dab right behind it. And it really creates a dam so that 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 fluoro or mono stays stays up straight. Also here, this this material get in the way of the thread. Just go ahead and pull it straight up, kind of 90 degree angle from the tail. And really, if you can get it straight and get a good cut, that's going to go ahead and make it that kind of coin shape we're looking for. So you cut it, it goes down. This side, just pull it all together, kind of get it lined up and sized. With finish or half hitch or whatever your pleasure. Trim it. So that's basically it. All right, so it's out of the vise now. It's almost done. Really, this would work. Um, there's guides in Charleston that, that have told me they've used just rabbit strips and dumbbell eyes and called them. But you know, so anyway, it's pretty bushy. You got your general shape when you pulled it at that 90 degree angle. I'll take a little bit longer scissors to just start trimming really as close to the as close to the hook shank as you can get it I don't like it very very thick or tall I guess you would say like this that sculpin will absorb so much water it really hits hits the water like a wet towel so get it thin and it lands a little softer it sinks a little slower I'm just I'm using my back finger here, my middle finger, and I'm kind of pushing this material up a little bit so that I can continue to work down and get trim it right on that right on that uh, hook shank. Now, it's a sharp one. Flip it over. Now 
again when you're fishing these tail and red fish in the grass just lead them a little bit where they're going to be as close to them as you can get without spooking them it's the, not really the rule of thumb it's the law but other than that they'll see this rabbit tail and just keep your rod tip low and don't panic <laughs> wait on them to eat it this is kind of a tricky cut back here towards this rabbit too if you wet your fingers and just kind of get that zonker out of the way just a little bit you can you can work in there a little tighter and again I think trimming these things I spend a lot way too much time trimming them I don't think it's very important but it definitely makes them look a lot better the thinner they are so that's basically it I could sit here and trim it for another hour which I probably will but not too big I'd say it's about the size of a nickel maybe in the head just experiment with colors and it's a great one